You don't see it until you see it. And you can't unsee it once you see it. One day, all of a sudden, I just saw it. My thoughts were, hey, this is a problem. Something just isn't right here, and maybe it's not me. Before this, I made excuses. I justified everything. He's not feeling well today. He had a rough childhood. He's stressed at work. He didn't have any siblings. Well, the kids were being too loud or frustrating. Our son could have been more obedient. I could have been more understanding. I could have said that better. I should have known that he would have been upset. And I want to take a minute here and just make sure I address this. I say he because that was my situation. But I fully recognize that there are men out there who are living this world with a covert narcissistic wife. I look at it as when those triggers start coming up, I look at that as an opportunity to resolve major issues that are in the relationship. I look at it as an opportunity to resolve issues. Now, for example, to resolve certain issues in that relationship, one of the uh, solutions may be to end the relationship. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm just using that as an example. Accept the reality that that relationship has run its course. Okay, what did you, what did you learn in that relationship? What valuable lessons did you learn? which kind of interwoves or connects with what I just said about looking at the opportunities for issues to be resolved, right? What did you learn in that relationship? Because every relationship, whether it's toxic or healthy, are designed to help us to grow and to learn some major lessons. Not because we're bad, not because we're evil, not because we're being punished. No, to learn some, most, some of the most valuable lessons in life, one of the major reasons why we have relationships is to grow and to learn some very valuable lessons in life. So when those triggers start coming up, I have taught myself to look at the opportunities to learn something, look for the opportunities to resolve issues that probably really need to be resolved. Narcissistic personality uses control tactics. MK Ultra mind control is a topic that some may conclude is controversial for many reasons. However, when narcissists and those with a cluster B personality seek source supply from others, he or she is notorious for attempting to play mind games by using gaslighting techniques to achieve their goal. Narcissists and other cluster B personality types work quickly to break down any personal boundaries within his or her relationships in order to maintain a strong sense of control and dominance. Those who practice personal boundaries are those who trust themselves, therefore, he or she will more than likely critically think rather than become reactionary when the narcissist pulls shenanigans. Studying and mimicking those who are targeted by narcissistic personality are major keys to maintaining primary and secondary source supply. Narcissists perhaps will pull shenanigans that could enrage and break the hearts of others. This is usually well planned out by the narcissist and those with a cluster B personality, however, he or she might be aware that in order to succeed, mind games must be played to perfection. Narcissists masterminds at not only imitating others, but he or she is capable of adapting to various types of environments like a chameleon. Narcissists seem to thrive due to obtaining many sources of supply, while keeping his or her false self-image relevant at the expense of others. The narcissist could sometimes have a trick bag full of entrapments for various situations in order to seduce the source supply he or she desires. The trick seems to be that if the narcissist finds the right formula of vices to cocktail with a person's emotional IQ, he or she continues to be successful in keeping source supply under control. Unfortunately, there are some narcissists who are so convincing by using gaslight techniques that some will believe that it was their own idea to become compliant to the narcissist shenanigans. There are keywords, word salad, phrases and gestures in which the narcissist has masterminded in order to maintain source supply all while keeping a dominant role in the relationship. The narcissist is usually sizing up several individuals all at once to determine if he or she is prime for source supply or immediate discard, therefore, 
the emotional IQ becomes crucial. The narcissist who has predatory aim is one that consistently hunts perhaps for sport in order to thrive and maintain survival. Narcissistic personality often seems to become fixated upon having a network of third-party relationships perhaps for fear of running out of source supply. A cocktail of unmerited fears. Unresolved childhood trauma and emotional IQ is how some narcissistic and other cluster B personality types often influence others to remain feeling stuck and confused about the quality of the relationship. Focus Tools Number 1 Research the subconscious mind and how it functions due to symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome and brain fog being a common issue for narcissism survivors. Number 2 Maintain a strong support base in order to continue to focus on thriving forward after narcissistic relationship has ended. Number 3 Reclaim your life by first acknowledging that your life has purpose. What happens when a narcissist encounters an authentic person? Those of you who are truth tellers will understand this better than anyone else. Especially if you were a truth teller as a child, at some level you were able to see right through to the inside of your narcissistic parent and your narcissistic parent knew that and they got really uncomfortable with you, which is why truth tellers often become scapegoated. As adults, when you're authentic, that happens again, that the authentic person can see right through to the narcissistic adult in their midst and that narcissistic adult doesn't like it. They will often try to insult the authentic person, speak badly about them behind their back, make fun of them, mock them, and really try to avoid seeing them in the future. What's fascinating is while the narcissist will often waste lots of time trying to win other people over, right? Because they're so insecure and they need the supply. There's something about authentic people that almost scare narcissists and you'll see that they probably won't try to win them over. How to loosen the grip of codependency in narcissist relationships. Practice emotional discipline. It's possible to learn how to practice self-regulatory process should you become triggered by the words and or actions of the narcissist. Test, challenge and question the narcissist's perception of you. Remember that your life has purpose. You are not responsible to change, rescue, or save your narcissist. Your personal experience with narcissism does not have to be the story of your life. They don't love you. And that's not your fault. They want to use you. That's not your fault. They want to control you. That's not your fault. They want to make you feel like your opinions don't matter. That's not your fault. They make you feel like you're walking on eggshells every day of your life. That's not your fault. You didn't do anything to deserve this. You entered this relationship or this marriage on false pretenses, and that is not your fault. They want to spread some breadcrumbs every once in a while to make you feel like they're trying, but they're not. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want you to open your mouth. They don't want you to realize your worth. They don't want you to realize that you can do it without them. So they're gonna do everything they possibly can to make you feel like you can't. I'm living proof that you can move on, that you can get past this, and that you do deserve more than a narcissist will ever give you. So do yourself a favor. Try and dig deep and realize that so you can get to the life that you deserve to live.